Okay, hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about uh, everyone's favorite, cortisol. And we're all talking about cortisol all the time. We're talking about stress all the time. Uh, but there's a lot of misinformation. Also, it's a little bit tricky hormone to understand. So I thought, well, we'll at least I'll try to share with you what I think I know. And of course, like I always say, you know, this is some of this is my, going to be my personal opinion. So uh, please discuss with your doctor when you have any further questions. So let's dive in. So cortisol. So cortisol, of course, is a stress hormone. Right, so you expect to see a cortisol spike whenever we are under stress. So, like the old uh, fear or you know flight response, right? So the old example, you know, a zebra is doing its own thing, and then a tiger jumps in, and the zebra's cortisol level goes up. The zebra runs away, and now the cortisol level goes down. So that's the that's the normal response. That's what we expect. Uh, it to happen. That's how our body adapts to any kind of stress. But the zebras, you know, in case the stress kind of occurred, the cortisol level went up, allowed the zebra to quickly react, be alert, be run away, and now the stress level came down. Unfortunately, humans, you know, we deal with a lot more mini stress every day. You know, car payments, mortgages, relationships. So our stress are not where a tiger is jumping in front of us, it's more sustained stress throughout the day. So what that leads is that leads to a more of a flat cortisol level around the clock all the time. So the problem with that is then because of that our mind is always in a state of you know, hyper alertness or hyper awakeness or you know heightened sense of tension about everything you know so and that's not good for health so someone who has a high cortisol level all the time of course is always in a hurry is always in a rush you know we're always doing hurry hurry let's get this done let's get this done and they're mentally very well very alert you know the mind is always active but the bodies are always tired so you know mind is wired body is tired so because that even at night time you're exhausted, you know, your body's exhausted, but you cannot sleep. Uh, that's signs of uh, problems with your adrenal glands and problems with your rhythm of your cortisol. And that's not uh, healthy at all. So a good cortisol spike is good, but it, we expect it to come down so we can relax. A more of a flat line or a constantly or chronically elevated cortisol level is not a good thing. So, of course, allergies. It's not really discussed that much, but uh, you know, if you had never had allergies before, and now suddenly you have a lot of allergies, you have issues with your adrenal glands. Because remember, when you have allergy, you go see your doctor. They'll say, "Well, let's do an allergy shot." And what's an allergy shot? It's you know, steroid injection. So we do the steroid injection. The allergies get better. We, everything symptoms go away. So we're happy. If your adrenal glands are making enough of their own steroid hormones, then generally you should not need an allergy shot or you should not get that many allergies. The allergies only happen when your inflammation is very high and you don't have anything to block that inflammation. So you have lack of steroid hormones or lack of steroid production by your adrenal glands. So if you're dealing with a lot of allergies, this is a, a common problem. Of course, uh, the, the fat storage, we all say, well, if you're storing fat here in this area, uh, you know, you have high levels of, of cortisol, but this is not always true, but that is true to a, lot, a significant extent. Why does the fat get stored here? Well, first of all, it's close to the adrenal glands. It's in the middle, so it's easy store of fat in case the fat needs to be mobilized quickly to fuel, fuel the body. But when you have elevated levels of stress or elevated levels of cortisol, we do not really mobilize this fat. It, the body is always in a fat storage mode. And then our patients will say, well, I had my cortisol levels checked and they were normal. I had a blood cortisol level done and it was all okay. So that means I don't have elevated cortisol. And that's not true also. Remember, the, the hormones, they work at the site of 
tissues, right? They work on the cellular level. They don't really, uh, are not really in the blood, right? So blood is more of inactive. It's the storage form or it's inactive. But the, the cortisol level at the tissue level, that's where it matters. So you can have a perfectly normal cortisol level, but you might have a high levels of cortisol inside a certain cells, for example, inside fat cells or inside adipose cells. So if you have a high levels of cortisol inside the fat cells, then you're going to be storing more fat inside those cells. So even if your cortisol in the blood is normal, you have a high levels of cortisol inside the fat cells. So intracellular level or the, the tissue level, that's where the hormone levels, that's what you want to know and that's the important part, not the blood hormone levels. Of course, we all know high levels of stress, of course, makes you prone to diabetes, but more importantly, makes you prone to type 2 diabetes, where you have resistance to the effect of insulin. So, want to lower your risk of insulin resistance, want to lower your risk of gaining fat or regaining that weight, we need to figure out how to bring your cortisol level to a more optimal level. And of course, uh, high levels of cortisol are associated with uh, depression, anxiety, stress. High cortisol levels are very toxic to the brain. So, you know, you can expect to have a, you know, issues with your brain health, trouble sleeping, and of course, trouble with cognition, trouble with memory over time. The, the number of neurons size and also the number decreases in issues where your cortisol levels are always elevated. So it's not a good state to be in. And a lot of patients, they get used to this as a normal state. They said, I'm always tired, I'm busy, but I'm overworking myself. So, but a lot of time your body, because your glands, our glands, they, they deteriorate with age, right? Remember, go back 100 years or 200 years, we weren't living up to 70 years of age or 80 or 90. Most of us, you know, will die like by the time we're in our 30s or 40s from infections or some other issues. So the life expectancy has gone up and our glands are not able to keep up with that because the glands are under enormous uh, needs of our daily stress. Plus on top of that, our nutritional status is poor. We are eating more processed food, more carbohydrate rich food, and we're not really eating the food that our adrenal glands need to put out cortisol when we really need it. So a thorough testing, comprehensive analysis and symptom signs, that's super important. And I think once the cortisol levels are balanced, among other hormones, uh, the more changes and uh, life just feels better and it, it gets better because it does feel better. So that's my take on cortisol. Again, it's a brief summary. It's a very complicated topic and I hope to address more uh, in the upcoming videos. Thank you very much. Okay. Hmm?